HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy here to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, you will hear what Lose It for the Library is all about. Town Clerk Jerry Holland announced her retirement, and we will get you up to date with Hiller Sports. But first, with Chief of the Hopkinton Fire Department Ken Clark retiring, the Board of Selectmen addressed the open fire chief position. For the last few weeks, the Board of Selectmen had two candidates to replace the retiring Fire Chief Ken Clark, Framingham Fire Chief Gary Darty, and Deputy Fire Chief Stephen Slammon. Prior to Tuesday's meeting, Framingham Fire Chief Gary Darty dropped his candidacy for the position. The Board of Selectmen discussed what to do next. Uh, through the chair, uh, Deputy Slammon uh, performed very well during the interviews. I would be uh, comfortable with him as chief, um, but if the board, through discussion, um, prefers uh, potentially a one-year interim as chief, uh, that would be a possibility as well. Um, okay. His background of his peers, though, he performed exceptionally well. This is an important decision, just like the one that we made a couple of years ago for the police chief. Um, and with an important decision like this, I'm much more comfortable having it be a difficult decision versus a no decision. Um, and it's, it's no reflection on, uh, on Mr. Slyman, but I think that we should get ourselves into a position where we make a choice from multiple candidates uh, and in the meantime uh, consider uh, an appointment of an interim chief. My understanding is the search committee was, was uh, very appreciative of all the interest that was just, you know, shown but really only picked four or five to really talk to, and of those really only said there's really two people here that make sense out of this pool across, across New England or maybe around the country. Um, and I just don't know if we're gonna get anything different from a new process. That said, I like the idea of having choices. And we don't have choices, so I don't, I don't know, I'm being wishy-washy on it, but um, I think we're in a tough spot. Yeah, we're definitely in a tough spot, um, but that's why we're in, that's why we're here. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Slayman is a, is a is a is a great candidate. Um, however, this a similar thing happened to us uh, just a few years ago with the school committee and and a, and a principal. Everybody dropped out, and we left with one person. And we then we said, okay, we'll go with it. Um, I think that if we um, go the route of uh, Mr. Sestari and um, and put in Mr. Slayman as a uh, as an interim, yet open up the search, then we're absolutely sure, and we make we can make that tough decision, and um, because we owe it to the we owe it to uh, to the townspeople to make sure that we do the uh, to do our best job. Through the chair, just to address that uh, that comment, John. This is this is a little bit different because um, not all the competition withdrew, and and the hiring committee, uh, the review committee that was put together, put forward two candidates that we would have confidence, complete confidence in either one of those candidates, um, and one of those candidates has has now withdrawn. Um, so so it wasn't like there was. There was one versus the other, and and while the the committee didn't take a, a position on a third candidate, um, Mr. Levinson, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, th I think Lieutenant Mitchell also interviewed extremely well. Um, so two candidates from Hopkinton, and and then a third with a relationship with Hopkinton. Yeah, there, we may have started with 18 and come down to these two this time. You know, them being, you know, th those two or maybe three from town or with a relationship to town, 
being far and above uh, the others. Um, but, you know, who knows? You know, maybe someone got jilted at their own department in the last month and now they want to find a different way up and, you know, they're from another part of the country or, you know, another town in the area or whatever. You know, you don't know what chance might, might happen where we get other candidates. Not saying that they're going to be any better than uh, uh, Deputy Chief Slayman. And I would hope and, and expect Deputy Chief Slayman to uh, keep his hat in the ring. And, uh, and then we'll find out. Selectman Brian Herr asked to hear from the chair of the personnel committee, Rob Levinson. Um, that we made a commitment to you that any candidate we recommended would be able to do the job. And we felt like we did that. We also said that we weren't going to present multiple candidates just for the sake of presenting multiple candidates. That would have given you choices. It would have made Steve easier, but that didn't, that didn't meet our commitment. We did the screening. To answer your question, I don't think it will produce significantly much. I also have a concern, uh, Mr. Starr, you were absolutely right. You said something about making um, a choice among multiple candidates. Again, that's exactly what happened. And when I presented uh, the candidates, I said uh, Deputy Slimmett was an important choice. Um, so I just feel strongly about that. I also, frankly, my own opinion here is that uh, if he's presented, if he's appointed as uh, interim chief and open up a new search, you cut his legs out from under him. And uh, I just, uh, it, it just doesn't feel right to me. So that's just my opinion. In the end, Selectman voted to allow the town manager to enter into negotiation with Deputy Chief Steve Slammon to be the interim chief. A new search or interview process is expected to start very soon for the permanent chief position. Deputy Stephen Slammon will serve as the interim fire chief while the search process is opened back up to fill the position permanently. Earlier this week, owner of CrossFit Resilience, Drew Carnes, stopped by the HCAM studios to talk about the Lose It for the Library program. It's a program that helps you lose weight while benefiting the library expansion project at the same time. Here's more. I'm here with Drew Carnes from CrossFit Resilience over on 25 South Street to discuss the Hopkinton Weight Loss Challenge, which will go to benefit the library expansion project. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Uh, you probably saw it advertised around town. The tagline is Lose It for the Library, and it's the Hopkinton Weight Loss Challenge. Uh, it's uh, designed a little bit after the show, the TV show, The Biggest Loser. And the objective is very simple. It's whoever loses the largest percentage of body weight will be the winner. And we have two divisions. One is for men and one is for women. It's a 30-day competition. And once again, it's to see who can lose the largest percentage of body weight during that period of time. It'll run from uh, the 7th of January to the 5th of February. So it's over in time for the Super Bowl. And it starts with New Year's resolutions, so hopefully people will be highly interested. Uh, it's $30 to participate, and what's very important here is half of the money goes to the two winners. They will split 50% of the money that's, that we collect, and the other 50% will go towards the Hopkinton Library Foundation for the expansion project that they're, they've been working diligently towards. They're at 700,000 of a goal towards getting to a million, and we thought this would be a great opportunity for us to do something that would have a meaningful impact for the town uh, and help to move one of the pet projects of the town a little bit closer towards its finish line. So uh, hopefully it's uh, a popular idea. Well, certainly after the holiday season, I'm sure there's a lot of people that could use a program like this. That's what we're hoping. Uh, could you talk about some of the workouts that you'll be doing in the program? Yeah, maybe I should talk about what each participant will receive during the course of the 30 days. Um, what we wanted to avoid is people jumping into this competition, competition for 30 days, eager to win, and really not have a plan and not have uh, adequate information and just try to starve themselves to win the competition. That would be very bad. So what we're doing is when people come in to weigh in, there's a weigh in between the, uh, the 5th and the 7th uh, of January, and then there's a weigh out right towards the end of the competition as well. Uh, when people weigh in, they'll get a digital packet of information that really spells out all the rules of the competition, but more important, it gives a bunch of information about how to exercise intelligently, wisely during the 30 days, 
and it also provides a lot of information about using good nutritional basics during the course of the 30 days. So once again, people don't make foolish decisions. Uh, additionally, as the four weeks progress, each week the participants will get one email uh, about helpful tips on how to work out and maybe what to do. And the second email will be the same concept except for diet and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So all said, there will be six emails during the course of the competition uh, to supplement what they get in the digital packet. The other thing that participants will be able to do is if they want some guidance about how to work out properly. That's one thing that at CrossFit Resilience we're pretty good at. Uh, we're going to provide um, boot camp style workouts on Saturday afternoons for as many people as want to participate and take a class. Um, we'll just make sure that we have availability. Uh, we'll run several classes if needed. They'll be run by some of our coaches and the cost on that of course is for free. Well, this program sounds great. How do you sign up? <laughs> uh, all you need to do is go to our uh, website, which is CrossFitResilience.com, and there's uh, just several icons there that you just have to um, uh, just tap, and you'll come to our landing page. It'll have all the information that I just went over and more, uh, and the important thing there is there's a registration button and a waiver button, and it'll just fill you in on how to get it done. But you just register, fill out the waiver, show up for the weigh-in, and then uh, that's all it takes. All right. Nice and easy, $30. That sounds terrific. Well, <laughs> lose it for the library at CrossFit Resilience. Are you going to participate? Uh, I don't know. You know. Let me tell you something. This sounds like a lot of fun. I think I want to do it. Oh, that's it. HCAM sponsoring Mike. We're in. Where do I sign? This is going to be a hit. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will tell you what to expect on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. We have highlights from the first week of the Hillers winter sports season, and I sat down with retiring town clerk Jerry Holland. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton High School winter sports got underway this month. Week one featured Hillers hockey and a pair of girls basketball games on HCAM. Here are the highlights from a nice start to the season. The Hopkinton Hillers opened up their varsity hockey season against the Ashland Clockers back on Saturday, December 12th, and they opened it up in style. Everett Rawl throws a shot goal, loose in front, is a goal, a backhanded goal by the Hillers, and they take a 1-0 lead. It was scored by J.H. Folke, one of the new Hillers this season. So, Samus throws in front, shot, and a goal! A, a wrister that goes up high, and I believe that is the second goal of the game for number 25. J.H. Vokey, right? There's a break in now, Temple now shot, and it hits the po post. Oh no, it's a goal! It went off of Barra and the post, and it went in, and the Hillers take a 3 0 lead. Now, they didn't waste any time as the Hillers kill off the penalty, getting on the scoreboard. 30 seconds in, here's a shot, and a goal! And that is a hat trick for J.H. Vokey! Welcome to Hopkinton. Bouncing puck now goes in the zone. It's Abbott. Abbott tries to throw in the front and it goes in. I'm not sure who got that. It could have been Vokey because I think it tipped off of him. Uh, was Vokey on the far side of the net? Yeah. Did it, did it, it make was it way all the way through? Yeah. It yeah. could have been. And it's lost. Shot and saved by McGrath and he made a nice save there. That was a nice shot on goal. 
got, I think it was Trent O'Connor, if I'm not mistaken. Here's a break in now, Delaney. It's stick check shot, and a goal by Matt Lindquist, and that is his first varsity goal. Yeah, that all started with Delaney making the rush through the neutral zone and getting it to the front of the net, and he was able to get a shot on with a rebound. Johnny on the spot, Matt Lindquist has tucked it in. As we mentioned, he counted 13 skaters. Here's a shot and a goal, and that is the fifth goal for J.H. Vokey. Number was that, five. Was that the, who, I don't know who put the backhand pass onto his stick, but when he loads up like that and has that shot ready to go, it's as hard as any high school shot you'll see as a wrist shot, and that's his third goal. It's gone up high like that, Mike. He's just quick to the top corner. The Hillers beat Ashland 8 to nothing in game one of the season. J.H. Vokey had five goals, Matt Lindquist had two, Will Abbott came through with four assists for the Hopkinton Hillers. Hillers girls home opener against Norton, Lillian Morningstar follows through a missed three-point attempt to put the Hillers up by four. Later in the first quarter, the Hillers started to really heat up. Elise Carlson buries a three to put the Hillers up 23 to 10. That's how the first quarter would end. In the second quarter, freshman Lillian Morningstar hitting for three to put the Hillers up by 16. Hillers keep it going from outside as Elise Carlson buries a three. Hillers went into the halftime locker room up 38 to 17, and they never look back as they take the opener 54 to 34 over Norton. Sophomore Ivy Goglin had a team high 16 points, while junior Julia Canastrari hit for 13 as the Hillers start off the season with a W. Tuesday, December 15th, Hillers girls were home for their second game of the season against Over Sherborne. Second quarter, Julia Canastrari gives the Hillers a 12-11 lead with a long two. Third quarter, Hillers up by seven. Canistrari does it again as she opens up a lane to put Hopkinton up by nine. Fourth quarter, Dover Sherborne within four. Emma Kasha says, no, they're not, and buries this three to put the Hillers up seven. Hillers end up with the 39-32 victory. Julia Canistrari had a team high 10 points, while Ivy Goglin dropped nine. She also had 10 rebounds in the game as the Hillers improved to two and oh on the season. Want to see more Hillers sports? Check out our website, hcam.tv, or watch full games on our YouTube page. Just head over to youtube.com slash hcamtv. After nearly 20 years of service to the town of Hopkinton, Jerry Holland will officially retire as town clerk beginning in 2016. I recently caught up with Jerry to talk with her about her career working for the town. Jerry Holland has been Hopkinton's town clerk since 2012 and overall has worked for the town of Hopkinton about 20 years, including 16 years working as an operations assistant. At the end of 2015, she will be officially retired as Hopkinton's town clerk. I asked Jerry to talk about her experience working for the town. So I started in 1996 working um, as the uh, assistant to the executive secretary at that time. And uh, we saw the ch I saw the chat it through. Uh, we went from f uh, three members of the Board of Selectmen to five members once the charter was um, accepted and approved, um, town, state, etc. cetera. Then, then that's when we went to a town manager. So that um, at that time I became the operation assistant to the present town manager right now um, is um, Mr. Kamalo. Uh, I had previously worked with one town manager before that and then Mr. Kamalo came on and and then I was there for a little bit more and I ran for the, I didn't run for the election at that point, I became the assistant um, town clerk. And then when the previous clerk, Ann Click, said she was gonna resign is when I actually said, okay, I'll run for the position, uh, run for the election, and um, that was in 2013. I started here in this office in 2012, so I was here for the presidential uh, election, etc. And then I ran for the election in 2013 and have been here since. Jerry talked about what she will miss most about her job. I can't, I have to say that I put, I, it's working with the people basically. Uh, the different 
and department heads uh, throughout the years. And in the beginning, I was here. It was just me and the executive secretary <clears throat> hiring the first, you know, the the uh, fire chief maybe or the. Uh, um, Going through a lot of that, I was a lot part of that with unions and um, getting to know the um, the different officers and working with the fire department and DPW. And of course, things changed on that and that that part. So I'd have to say it's really the people. I love I love working with the people, and I was seeing people coming in and bringing them up, see us to the land use planning department. Uh, because they're not sure where to go, what to do, and I'll, I'll bring them up and introduce them uh, to the staff, basically, or who's there, and then I walk down and I continue to just do my job. And uh, I think that's it. And town has afforded me, I, that's how I met my friend Cheryl Perrault, and we started the Women's Art Forum together. I met her in the town hall. Her daughters had it, were part of the Nacho here on the second floor, and pretty soon we're, uh, we've been together, we've been very good friends for almost 20 years, actually. Uh, and and, and 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 so yes, I will miss that part of it. I definitely will miss that. I've been um, planning and trying to uh, always get things in order. I think that's one of my strengths as an organization. And I have every confidence in the uh, the assistant town clerk, Brenda McCann, to continue that. Um, and that's part of why I made my decision at this point. I had to take care of some of my family business um, and. So I'm hoping to continue uh, giving more time maybe to projects just because I'm continuing some of my art um, therapy sessions over at Serenity House. I was an art therapist with the state for DYS for a few years and I do have a home studio so I'm looking forward to completing some of those projects that I've started. Um, and also with the Respite Center with Mary and Sharon. I remember when they first started in town and I was able to give some time there but haven't been in the, so much in this the last few years or so. Um, also looking forward to spending time with my husband and um, I want to um, create a little children's book series for my granddaughter so she'll know who her grandparents are and her family. And uh, I'll miss H. Cam. We used to do all the shows, Norman and I, town manager, would do shows on H. Cam. But I'll still be around, hopefully. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah. Um, how, how does it feel in these last few days leading up to uh, retirement? I'm sure there must be a lot of emotions. Uh, I, I, residents have been on. I want to thank the residents of the town since I made my announcement. Uh, they stop as I'm walking. I was very, I, I really came in over the weekend actually to write that announcement. Uh, that's how important it was to me for people to understand that it was a difficult decision for me to do this at this time, but I, how much I love this community and how much support I've had for them. So in a way, the community, thank you so much for stopping um, as I'm walking or just saying to me, thank you so much for your years, I'm happy for you, that, that means the world to me. It really means the world to me, because it was difficult for me to do this. And um, so yeah, I, I think being around the Christmas holidays is most likely kind of helping it along the way for me to do that. But honestly, on January 2nd, I'm gonna be at Project Just Because helping to do inventory. And then I, I just need to spend time uh, trying to figure out what my husband and I are going to do in the future. So, yeah, I'm very cool with everything. I really am. And I think because of the community and like you, Tom, coming in, it's great. Or the mailman who just came in, Mark, who I know by name. When are you leaving now? Yeah, those are the, and I think it's a happy time of season till Christmas, celebration of uh, Christmas and um, yeah. That's it. Well, the community certainly owes you a big thank you for all you've done for this town throughout well, the years. Well, thank you. Are you kidding me? Thank <laughs> you for accepting me and receiving me and for helping me through the years just by uh, by your giving back, too. So, thank you. I, and I want to thank the most wicked, coolest police department, fire department, DPW in at school even I know that uh, through the years and the support from different projects um, I just I, I can't thank them enough I love all of you 
and I can't express that enough. And I think you know that public library. Um, I just love this community in so many ways. So, and my church, I go to Faith Community, and St. John's. I love St. John's. So, I kind of like to prep, travel and visit. So, and thank everybody like that. Thank you so much. And Jim <laughs> at HCAM and Mike. Oh my gosh, I don't want to miss anybody's name. So you know who you are. Okay, that's it. All right, well, Thank congratulations Thanks, on a great Tom. career, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you around. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you will. Thanks, Tom. Jerry will certainly be missed around Town Hall. To hear more about Jerry Holland's upcoming retirement, head over to our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot more programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider to tell you what to expect. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, December 26th at 1.30 p.m., the Hillers face off against the Raiders in the rink with Ice Hockey versus Dover Sherborne. On Monday, December 28th at 7 p.m., audience members take the stage to share their original poetry and music on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I am frozen by this fearless examination of self. This candor that radiates from your skin, I see in your eyes neither criticism nor adoration, just curiosity to know yourself by the features that make you. And on HCAM Ed, the Winter Concert Series continues with the HHS Band's Winter Concert, the Orchestra Night Performance, and the Choral Night Performance. For program dates and times, visit hcam.tv slash education. If you want to know when all of our new programming will air, just visit hcam.tv slash news updates, where you can subscribe to our HCAM Insider newsletter and learn about all of the latest and greatest programs from HCAM. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to learn about what's going on in Hopkinton. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and our Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and enjoy your holidays.